With Expo Router, we can build universal apps for web and native. Also, we can use API routes to write server code within a React Native code base. The mobile app part of this equation can already be built and deployed to the stores with EAS, but we've never quite had an integrated way to do the same for the web part. Until now. Introducing EAS Hosting, designed specifically for deploying and managing your Expo Router websites and API routes. In this video, we will cover all the main functionality included in this preview release. How to deploy a project, assign aliases and a custom domain. We'll see how to use API routes, look up request logs, manage environment variables and automate your deployments with workflows. So let's get started. The core functionality here is being able to easily deploy your Expo Router web project and access the deployment in seconds. We start by creating a new project using the default template. You can of course use an existing project. The important part is that it's using Expo Router, you have the web project set up, and your web output is set to either static or server. Let's just run the website on localhost to check that everything's working. Now, to deploy this with EAS Hosting, you will need an account on expo.dev. Make sure you have the latest version of the EAS CLI installed. And if you're not already logged in, log into your account on the CLI. The deploy command does not actually bundle the project for you, so we'll need to export the web project first. Running MPX Expo Export Platform Web will create a dist folder with the web output. Now we can deploy the dist folder with EAS Deploy. I'll create the new project. And since this is the first deployment of this project on my account, I'm being asked to choose a preview subdomain. This is a unique prefix that all deployments of this project will have. Once I've chosen my subdomain, my project is deployed and the URL is printed out in the terminal. And there we go. I have my website deployed with EAS Hosting. You can also view and manage these deployments on the EAS dashboard. Each worker deployment has a unique URL. Aliases are a way to create predictable URLs to assign deployments to. So for example, test, staging, production, or PR previews. Your deployment URL consists of your previous subdomain, two dashes, followed by your deployment ID. This part here can be customized so that in addition to this deployment URL, you can access the same deployment via an alias. This can be used to set up tests or staging environments or even PR previews. Let's make a small change in the project. I'll change welcome to hello. Always remember to re-export before deploying if you made a code change. This will regenerate a dist folder. If you made a deployment and you find your local changes aren't reflected in the deployment, you probably forgot to export. Now I can ES deploy and assign this deployment the alias of test. You'll notice that this created the deployment URL as before, but this deployment can also be accessible from the alias URL. You can also use the CLI to assign aliases to existing deployments by passing in the deployment ID and the new alias. Aliases can also be created or deleted via the dashboard. And choosing an alias that's already in use will reassign it to the new deployment. Your production URL is just your previous subdomain with expo.app. You can promote an existing deployment to production. Or make a new deployment and immediately assign it to production. Your production deployment is special in that you can set up a custom domain for it in your project settings. This can point to either a top level domain or a subdomain. And once set up, it will always point to the deployment assigned to production. API routes are a way to write server code within your app directory. This gives us an easy and a secure way to interact with backend services.
API routes are for writing server code within your app directory. They are only available for web projects that are exported in server mode. So let's go ahead and change the web output in AppJSON to server. Now if you add plus API to any file in your app directory, it becomes an API route. That is to say, the code in there will only be executed on the server. Let's create an API folder in our app directory. Now I'll create a file called greeting plus api.ts. You can execute functions for the get, post, put, patch, delete, head and options methods from an API route by exporting a function with the method name. In this case, we'll use the get method and return a JSON response with a greeting. Let's run the app locally. And now if I open API greeting in my browser, I see the data returned from my API route. Let's use the same API route to return a different greeting from a post request. In this case, we'll expect the name to be included in the search parameters of the URL and we'll return a response using that name. Now we'll use an HTTP client to check the post request. I'll pass in name equals caddy in the URL params and the return greeting will include the name. You can really write any API code here. For example, you could set up a GraphQL endpoint. Let's install some dependencies needed for GraphQL and create a separate file for the GraphQL API endpoint. I've created a very simple schema here just with a greeting field that returns a greeting from GraphQL. Now after starting the bundler again, I can query the greeting from our GraphQL endpoint. Before deploying, we'll want to re-export our app to include the new changes and ES deploy our app with the API routes. And now we can access the same endpoints on the deployed apps, the GraphQL endpoint, the post endpoint, and the get endpoint. As before, the get endpoint is also accessible in the browser. In case you want to build a React Native app with API routes, but you don't yet want a website, you can export with the no SSG flag. This will generate a dust folder with only the server code. And let's deploy this with EAS deploy. Now, if I open this deployment in the browser, you'll see that the website isn't hosted, but the API routes are deployed. As we've seen, API routes can be queried directly, but in most cases, we would want to query these endpoints from the app that we're building. I've added a new screen here with three pressable elements for each of our API endpoints. So let's query our get endpoint first and show an alert. This works on the web and on a native app. But as our website and API are on the same domain, we shouldn't have to include the origin URL. With this change, everything still works perfectly on the web, but not on a native app. We can, however, add the origin for the native app using an expert router config plugin. Now going back to the native app, we can access our API route again. Obviously you don't want to use the localhost endpoint unless you're developing locally. So we can convert the app JSON to app config JS and make the origin conditional. So for example, in this case, I'll use the localhost origin in dev mode and the production deployment otherwise. For completeness, we'll also add a handler for our post endpoint and the GraphQL endpoint. All three are working on the web and on the native app. Finally, we'll export the new code and deploy the changes to production, where we are able to access the deployed API routes. The dashboard on EIS includes pages for managing deployments, assigning aliases, as well as just general observability and metrics. The EAS hosting dashboard provides some pages for inspecting metrics, request logs, and crashes. You can look at recent requests, see metadata for a particular request,
and even open the details for the deployment that handled it. For API routes, we can also inspect logs and crashes. So let's create a new API route called crash plus api.ts. It will include a single get endpoint that will unceremoniously crash the API. And let's also add a console log to our greeting endpoint. Now after I export and deploy, I can navigate to the new endpoint. And let me also open the greeting endpoint a couple of times just to get some logs going. The logs may take a minute or so to show up on a dashboard, but once they do, I can go ahead and inspect the details and stack trace of the crash I had. And on a deployment level, we can also look up the logs. It's worth noting that you can look up an individual request by the request ID. This will be printed on the error pages and included as a response header. So you can open the request page and filter using a specific request ID. API routes are server-side functions. This means that we can securely use sensitive environment variables. This is hugely beneficial for mobile developers, finally giving us a straightforward and a secure way to build end-to-end -end experiences. This includes auth and accessing sensitive APIs. Environment variables are a huge part of this, so let's see how to include variables in the server and the client-side code of your deployment. Let's create an end file with two values, my value, which is server only, and extra public value, which is for both the client and the server. I have updated the index root to print out both of these values on the client side, and also updated the greeting API to return these values as part of the greeting. Now, when I run the website locally, as expected, only expo public value is visible on the client side, whereas if I open the greeting API route, it has access to both of the environment variables. This is because only expo public prefix demand variables are inlined in the client side bundle. This means that anything not prefixed with expo public is server only and may contain sensitive values such as API keys. Now, to deploy this app with environment variables, let's run the export command. Note that this is the point where all the client side environment variables are inlined. So you'll need to ensure the correct environment variables are set before running the command. If we search the exported client-side bundle for client and server, you'll see that the environment variable has been replaced with the actual value. This is what we mean by inlining. Conversely, when we search the server function for my value, we'll see that this hasn't been replaced and it's still saying process.env. This is because the server side environment variables are shipped when you run ES deploy. So just as a demonstration, I'm going to change this to append changed before deploy and then run ES deploy. You'll see that the client side environment variable is set to what it was when the project was exported, but the server side is set to the value from when deploy was run. Instead of managing this end file locally, we can also use EAS environment variables. The EASN of help command lists out how to add and edit environment variables. Since we already defined the ones we need in an end file, let's just push this file. You'll be able to see and edit these environment variables in your project dashboard on the configuration and environment variables. Here you can edit, delete, and also add additional environment variables. Let's add another variable and make it sensitive. Note that only plain text and sensitive environment variables can be used for hosting. Secret environment variables cannot be used in code. I'll make this one production only. Now I can delete my local end file and pull down the end file for the environment I want to run against. Notice that this now includes the new sensitive environment variable that I created via the website. Now, when you export the web bundle locally, you'll need to make sure that you have the correct environment pulled down before running MPX Expo export. This is needed for the client side code. But for the server side environment variables, I can remove the end file altogether 
and instead use the environment flag in EAS deploy. So far, we've been using the EAS CLI to deploy locally. In most real world scenarios, we usually end up doing deployments in an automated way. So let's see how to deploy this project continuously with EAS workflows. First thing, we'll need to push our code repository up to GitHub. Now on EAS, let's open the project, go to configuration and GitHub. To enable workflows to run events from GitHub, we'll need to install the Expo GitHub app and connect the project. In our code base, let's create a dot folder called EAS, inside it a folder called workflows, and inside that a YAML file called deploy. We're going to use a pre-packaged deploy workflow for this. This workflow will run on push to the main branch. It will export the web project using the production environment variables, then deploy the project and promote it to production. Let's also create an empty EAS.json file. Let's trigger the workflow locally first, just to check that everything's working. And now we can open the workflow run on the website. Here we can see the workflow file and each step in the completed job. Scrolling down to the deploy step, we can open the latest deployment. And finally, let's commit the workflow file and push all our changes to main. Because we've already set up the GitHub integration, this push itself will trigger a workflow run, as will all subsequent pushes to main. This has been the very first preview of EAS hosting. With this release, we hope to lay the groundwork for many new features and a much greater integration between web and native. There is so much more to come. We are excited for what's next, so watch this space. Thank you and happy hosting.